Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Joe Danger 2 the Movie. Now you might be saying, Northern Line, you already did a video about Joe Danger 2 uh, last year when the game originally came out on Xbox Live Arcade. Well, it seems like there have been a lot of uh, Xbox Live uh, exclusivity agreements that have been running out late lately, uh, and these games have been coming to PC. You know, first with Super Splatters, which was like an extended version or a Criterion Collection edition of The Splatters, which came out for Xbox Live Arcade last year. Now Joe Danger 2, uh, and the original Joe Danger, some of Xbox Live Arcade's marquee-ish titles uh, that are now coming over to the PC. Joe Danger 2 is... 12 bucks, I believe. Joe Danger 1 is 12 bucks, but you can get them together for 15 bucks in a double pack, which just seems like a no-brainer for the best value. Now, uh, I played a little bit of both of the games. I'm not going to show off Joe Danger 1 because it's essentially basically the same as, as Joe Danger 2. So uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of show off what's going on for people who may have missed the games the first time around uh, and explain why these are kind of an interesting uh, series of games. And I think when I described them the first time... I didn't do a very good job of it. Like, this is almost a chance for me to atone for previous mistakes, because I believe I originally, I never knew how to approach the Joe Danger series, because I'm a big fan of Trials, obviously. Uh, so, you know, ostensibly this looks very, very similar to Trials. You know, we're, we're a man on a vehicle, sometimes it's an ATV, sometimes we have a jetpack, sometimes we have a, uh, a motorcycle, etc, etc. Uh, so the, the Trials elements are, you know, very strong, the Trials foo, if you will. Uh, but it's not really in the same vein, at least most of it is not focused around like, oh, this is super difficult, like get over these obstacles and try to survive it the actual like closest analog to this game is something like a collectathon platformer almost from like the n64 era or something like that like the odd object there oh jesus i didn't expect that to happen uh the object of the missions is not necessarily survival at least not all of the time there's actually various objectives that you have on every single level uh each of which gives you stars so you can almost think of this as like a mario 64 or a banjo kazooie type game which i don't think i got the first time that i that i played through this when I, the first time i played through it i was like oh, it, it seems unfocused it's not trials like it's a worse version of trials and that's, that's not necessarily a fair descriptor for what goes on in Joe Danger, because it is very much more kind of like an N64 style platformer, at least in terms of structure, but on a vehicle. So what are our objectives on, uh, on this level right here? Well, uh, you can see down at the bottom, uh, one of them is going to be to crush all of these eggs, which is that egg star that you can see. Usually you can just divine it. Uh, there's always one for collecting all of these blue stars, or at least there's often one when, on any level where there is blue stars. There's one for getting all of these bananas in a certain amount of time, which uh, I might have already screwed myself over on. Uh, but hopefully I don't. And, you know, sometimes there are admittedly... Oh, we gotta crush this egg. Sometimes admittedly there are ones for... Um, how many am I missing? Oh, I was so close! That was the last banana! Uh, sometimes there are some for, uh, finishing a level quickly. So it's not always just about, um, you know, collecting things. Sometimes there is an element of, like, time trials involved. But it's very rarely, like, it's not like trials where it's so simple, where it's, like, just get to the end of the level and you succeed. Um, instead, you have kind of differential objectives, which some people are gonna like, some people are not gonna like. For what it's worth, e even with my newfound, uh, appreciation for the structure of, uh, Joe Danger, I still think this is not as, uh, satisfying as an experience of trials, or as trials most of the time. That being said, uh, it, it doesn't really have to be because they're not necessarily direct competitors despite how similar they look. So that's what I wanted to just cover there uh, right off the bat. And I'm glad these are out on the PC because it sucks that they were on a, potentially a platform where they had a more limited audience. Although, you know, I, I assume that they did alright for themselves. This was uh, somewhat of a noteworthy release when it came out for Xbox Live Arcade last year. So, uh, wh what's the structure of Joe Danger? What's the premise of Joe Danger? Basically, we're playing as Joe Danger. He's a uh, dopey kind of stuntman, a little bit down on his luck. Uh, and he's been cast in all these movies. And... Uh, each one of them, it's almost, it reminds me a little bit of Stuntman on the PlayStation 2. Uh, each one of them has, like, a theme that is obviously, like, directly taken from some Hollywood, uh, you know, genre or trope. So there's obviously Joe versus the Volcano is an Indiana Jones one. Uh, Dr. Snow is a James Bond type in an Alpine level. Timed Cop, uh, I guess, uh, you know, in its title it's a ripoff of Time Cop, but, uh... You know, it's just your standard cop movie with motorcycle chases and whatnot. You don't actually travel through time. And Extinction, I guess, is more of a uh, Jurassic Park or old school style, like a Land of the Lost or something like that. Not the 2009 Land of the Lost. Uh, so basically, as you saw, by earning those stars, um, we improve our progress in the game. I'm about 25% of the way through uh, Joe Danger 2. And Joe Danger 1, I'm a little lower, but it seems like that game's a little bit longer. That being said, uh, I did spend about an hour with Joe Danger 1, and, you know, this is 45 minutes with the PC version uh, of Joe Danger 2. Uh, but I spent uh, another hour or two with the Xbox Live Arcade version when it came out last year, and they seem functionally basically the same, uh, with the exception of the, this very hard mode, which uh, the guys from Hello Games encouraged me to try out. And again, of course, uh, it's worth noting on all of these videos, basically, that these are coming from promo copies from the developers, so big thanks to them uh, for giving me a review copy. But yeah, Joe Danger 2, you know, how do I feel about it? It's a little bit, it's a, kind of a tough 
I guess I missed my special star there. There is also like a danger thing that you can get. Like if you collect all the danger letters, uh, it gives you all of the stars as well. I guess those uh, those switches are blocks uh, that help protect us from these cannonballs. I understand now. Uh, and there's the D, so some of these levels are long. Don't take that out of context, Northern Lion says there's the D. But anyway, uh, we're going to try to collect all these letters. Levels r vary in terms of their uh, length. Sometimes they are, you know, 30 seconds long. Sometimes they are 10 seconds long. And sometimes they are uh, a little bit longer than that. I'm not sure why we're having some frame rate issues here, but let's continue onwards. Oh, if we land on this, I actually don't know what it does. It gives us unlimited boost. Okay. So what I'm most interested in checking out is this uh, hard mode. Because the main thing that makes this game... I mean, it's almost like the distinction between, uh, you know, platformers like... Oh, Jesus Christ. It's almost the distinction between platformers like Super Meat Boy and platformers like Rayman or something like that. I generally prefer platformers where the, the main objective, primarily, is just to get to the end. So I like games like Super Meat Boy, uh, Super Mario World is a lot like that, or all of the Super Mario games, or Mario games in general, I guess I should say, um, are, are like that. And I, I kind of find myself not as big of a fan of, of games, you know, like Rayman or... Even stuff like A Hat in Time, even though I, I very much liked what I played of A Hat in Time, are you serious? Um, I, I prefer when it's just a very simple objective because I'm a very simple man, you know, as, as Leonard Skinner said. Um, but the, the very hard mode does seem, I'm going to get through this level even if it kills me. Uh, the very hard mode does seem uh, more up my alley because it's basically just survival, so we'll, we'll see how that ends up working out for us. I am getting my ass kicked here. Of course, as soon as I say a game is not hard, it's going to uh, beat me into submission here. So let's just get out of there as fast as we can. Uh, we should switch here. There we go. So you can switch between tracks. And we made it there, barely. Doing some loop-de-loops as you see. There's some interesting kind of environmental stuff that can happen uh, as you play through Joe Danger and Joe Danger 2. And keep in mind, you know, uh, even though this is kind of a let's look at a both of game, both of the games, uh, it's not really. This is just Joe Danger 2. But keep in mind that if you're going to buy this, you should probably just invest the extra three dollars or whatever it is and pick up Joe Danger 1 at the same time because if you like Joe Danger 2, Joe Danger 1 basically more of the same. Joe Danger 2 is a little bit, I like the environments a little bit more. Uh, the game seems a little bit more focused and this leaderboard stuff at the end is integrated a little bit better. Uh, but you might as well pick up both regardless. If you're only going to pick up one, pick up Joe Danger 2, but I kind of don't understand why you'd only pick up one. Alright, so let's do one more level here. Escape the big base. What's really cool about uh, something like Joe Danger 2 versus something like Trials, and you know, I've mentioned the negatives already before, or what I feel are the negatives at the very least, um, but the, the positives are that this allows for a kind of novel structure that doesn't exist in a game like Trials, where in Trials, you know, basically there is some versatility with a level editor, but whenever you're playing the game, uh, the, the core campaign levels, it's basically just like, you know, get to the end uh, as fast as possible and falling as little as possible. Uh, whereas in something like this, you can have some stealthy levels, like there's levels where your main objective is to like get into an enemy base, base without alerting them to your presence, so you gotta like uh, watch out for, uh, oh, let's jump over this, you gotta watch out for like uh, electric gates and things like that and alarm bells that you could trip, and that's really cool, I, I appreciate that, and now that I come from the perspective of playing this as a, uh, a platformer basically instead of a, uh, a Trials well, not even knockoff. That's a really derisive way to put it, but a reductive way to put it, especially. Um, but a, you know, a trials-influenced game, uh, it, it, it means a lot more for me from that perspective. Again, apologies for the frame rate issues. I can't imagine that this is something on my end. I have had a couple of technical issues uh, when I was playing the game in windowed mode, and I like alt tabbed out. It, it froze the game completely uh, a couple times, always at the like end of uh, game screen. So, uh, well, I haven't had any issues when I'm not recording the game. I can't seem to get this uh, timing properly here. Or timing proper, I guess. But well, I haven't had any technical issues when not recording the game from a frame rate standpoint. Uh, there have been some technical issues uh, overall, which is unfortunate. I guess I just I'm supposed to crash into the snowbank. Okay, I, I mean I am driving a snowmobile, so that makes sense. And you know there is a certain amount of trial and error uh, can uh, inherent in something like Joe Danger too. You know you've got to memorize the levels to a certain extent. Uh, there are a few that are, you know, like this and about, uh, you know, memorizing patterns and specifically doing so to uh, either collect something like uh, gold bars falling out the back of an enemy truck or, um, you know, just dodging shots like we are doing right now. What's interesting is you do also have, like, total independent control over your vehicle when it's in the air. Uh, so by using the right trigger in the air, you can push it forward, and by using the left trigger, uh, you can move it backwards even though it doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, maybe we'll see it if I go off this ramp, for example. Yeah, I can like totally break in midair, which is good. It, it makes for a, um, well, you know, since you're collecting things, it makes this a lot less frustrating because it does allow you to, um, you know, simply reverse whenever you want to. So let's go back and um, 
check out this. Oh, I didn't. I didn't mean to hit retry there. Let's go back to the main menu. Also, this is totally superficial, but I, I don't like this like um, you know VCR style controls on the menu. I wish it just had it written in plain English. Um, and that's probably the most minor gripe I could possibly muster for a game, but it is kind of annoying. It, you know, games do this a lot. Um, let's, let's try this ultra hard preview here, but it, it is a little annoying to me. So, beat the assault part five, hit all the targets, explore for hidden stars, explore for hidden stars. So, uh, hit all the targets, I guess, is probably going to be my primary objective, because I'm not much of a, an explorer when it comes to games, I gotta say. Alright, so step one, probably not get cut up by those saws, by the guess. Now, this is probably the more trialsy aspect of the game. Am I even going to be able to jump over that? I'm trying to think. I wonder, maybe if I hit a boost, I can. Now, I should mention there is a like a tricking element in the game as well. I haven't talked like at all about the boost. Oh my god. I haven't talked at all about the boost meter so far. But the way that this basically works is that um, as the uh, as you do more tricks, and tricks can include stuff like uh, you know wheelies, which I can just do on the spot here basically so you can see how it works. Uh, and we can do a reverse wheelie, I suppose, as well, which actually works, even though I didn't expect it to. Uh, or you can just, like, use the right bumper and left bumper, and I am using the Xbox 360 controller quite obviously here to do tricks. And if you, uh, mash those out, you do get the boost meter, which is the, in the bottom left corner there. Uh, and by using this boost, this will allow you to actually beat the level. So I can do a double jump here, I think, by using X. Which may, thankfully, finally allow me to get over here, and hopefully the environmental stuff will calm down a little bit so the frame rate can, uh, recover. And uh, we'll see if we can actually beat this level now, so I probably should be using my boost a little bit more often. Again, I, I have to stress that although this might seem like it's my technical issue, uh, you know, I record new AAA games uh, with zero frame rate issues on this PC. So as much as it, it kind of seems like I'm throwing the publisher or developer under the bus here, um, you know, I, I'm willing to agree to disagree, but uh, my guess is that it, it, it doesn't lie on my end, but perhaps uh, their end. Which is fine, you know, games have issues like this with Fraps sometimes. It could be Fraps' issue as well. Um, and I apologize for the video quality, but again, there's not that much that can be done about it. So, let's come through here, jump over this, and uh, this seems more like memorizing patterns, which to be quite honest with you, is more my style. I would rather do this than, you know, spend half an hour on a level collecting things, but that's uh, just because of my nature, I suppose. So let's come through here, duck, jump, double jump. I think this might be the furthest we've ever made it. Try it again. And uh, we'll get some points here. Now, a lot of the levels, one of the star requirements is 100% uh, comboing. The game is big on score. Like, score is what gets you the, the high leaderboard spots, not simply finishing the level in a quick amount of time. Uh, which makes sense, I suppose. Uh, but by the same token, since I am very bad at multitasking, it causes me some problems sometimes. So there might be a, a, a star for getting all of the... Um, Uh-oh. What is watch out me? No, I really should have boosted through that. There's no checkpoints in this mode either, so I guess you've got to just do it all in one fell swoop. I mean, usually there are um, fairly lenient checkpoints throughout the game, uh, but if you're the kind of person who plays a game like Trials, and I know I said don't stop comparing it to Trials, and now I just endlessly talk about Trials, but if you're the kind of person who, whenever they make one mistake in a uh, Trials run, completely restarts the level, this isn't going to matter too much to you. As you might expect, I am uh, a person of that kind. So let's try this again. I mean, this is basically a tool-assisted speed run here because the fact that the frame rate keeps dipping is helping me out a great deal. And we'll continue jumping over the spikes. The double jump, basically a godsend. Sometimes I can get the double jump to work, sometimes I can't. It's actually worth noting that the graphical settings uh, in the engine are set on medium right now. So, uh, you know, it's possible, A, that if we were on low, the frame rate might be better, but mostly... Um, I'm kind of incredulous that it still seems to be so slow. I don't think we're gonna be able to make it through here. Uh, because I didn't pick up, I missed like the golden clock, which gives you presumably more time. Uh, but we're getting kind of close here. That must be the end of the level. Oh, it was like a second away from being able to pick it up. Okay, let's try one last run here, and then uh, maybe we'll call it quits, because I actually don't have too much more to say uh, about this Joe Danger pack. I'm glad that it's on Steam, uh, and hopefully it finds a, an audience that appreciates it a little bit more than I do. It's a well-made game. Uh, and, you know, technical issues here that may or may not be their fault or my fault aside. Uh, it's just not really my kind of game, but that doesn't necessarily mean I begrudge it. I mean, there's games that, you know, objectively I can sit here and say don't buy, like uh, Revelations 2012, for example, and, and, you know, Alien Shooter 2 Conscription, stuff like that. Uh, but a game like this that just isn't really up my alley, I can't criticize it too much. Uh, I, I understand what it's going for. If it, It's weird to say from looking at the structure here, but if you're a fan of, like, you know, replaying levels a lot to accomplish multiple objectives in the same vein as, as something like a collectathon platformer uh, from maybe the N64 era, or, you know, maybe, I mean, it's 2D side-scrolling, so I guess it's more like the Super Nintendo era, but I always uh, associate collectathon platformers 
uh, with the uh, N64. But if you're a fan of games like that, Joe Danger 2 might be something that actually, you know, is, is a little bit more palatable for you, and that is totally a-okay. So here's a, a big slow motion moment for us as we come over here. No, go back! Oh my god, I didn't use the air brakes effectively. This might be the end of the level, though, or at the very least, we're getting close to it. I hope you can do this. All right, I am the best around. We're going to get a new vehicle here. Indeed, it is now the jetpack. Okay, so I can control the jetpack myself. Oh, come on. I barely touched the spike. And now we have to start over from the very beginning. You know what? I'm going to exit back to the main menu. Uh, and I'm going to say that this is going to do it for my Let's Look at of Joe Danger 2. If you want to get a more comprehensive opinion, there is like a 30-minute video that I recorded last year of this game, specifically for Xbox Live Arcade. Uh, and the PC version seems basically the same. Uh, in terms of the campaign size of Joe Danger 2, pretty short again. Uh, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes invested in Joe Danger 2. I'm 29% complete, and that doesn't mean I've only seen 29% of the levels. More, over, more like, um, you know, I haven't completed all of the objectives on the early levels, so that, that could bump me up to somewhere around, you know, 50 or 60 right now, possibly. Um, but yeah, Joe Danger 2 plus Joe Danger 1 in a pack for 15 bucks is a pretty good deal if you think you might be a fan of this. Uh, I would encourage you, if you have uh, Xbox Live Arcade, why not try out the trial for these games and see if you're uh, interested in that. Uh, if you don't, you know, maybe wait for a sale to see if it's up your alley. It's not necessarily as uh, recommendable as something like trials in my opinion but that being said I can definitely see the appeal uh, and I'm glad these games are now on uh, PC so that maybe they will reach a wider audience and hopefully it does well for the developers but in any case as always thanks for watching there will be a link to pick up uh, Joe Danger 2 double pack in the video description below and from there you can navigate to buy the specific games if you only want to purchase one of the individual ones for whatever reason as always thanks for watching and I will see you next time